Lamb and Bell, the new sound of Nova Mornings in 2023 is Early Breakfast. How good is this? Ben Lamb and Bell from 6am and Jody and Hazy from 7. You guys are doing great. I love you so much. The show's great. You make my life bearable. I'm so happy with what's going on. Just pinching myself. Jody and Hazy. It's the new sound of Nova in 2023. Well, hello there. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. Uh, I hope you're happy that I'm here because Jody Oddy is um, just a little bit flat because this is Jody and Hazy, not Jody and Mally. Didn't you just come back down to earth when I walked back into the studio? Oh, well, the Premier was my co host, and how good was it? I mean, like, the man has everything. He's just good looking, he's got power. He's very suave. He's very funny. He's the complete package. And now I have to deal with you. Well, I have none of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Malinowski, as it must be said, um, look, if he uh, gets bored being the Premier, he could quite easily slot into a little position on Nova Breakfast. Yes, I would enjoy that very much so. Hey, Jody's Juice as well. How good was that this morning? We revealed exactly what was in Shane Warne's will and who he left it to. No real surprises there, but goodness, his fortune, massive. Yeah, and I don't know if that surprised a lot of people, but yeah, Shane Warne, just ridiculous. His wealth. And you think, because you think Australian sportsmen, you think cricketers, oh, yeah, they make pretty good coin, but yeah, yeah Warne, he was right at the top shelf. Um, the other thing we need to talk about as well is, are you schnitting me, where one of us tells a lie, one of us tells the truth, and we get someone on board to try and uh, debunk who's actually on board and saying the right things, and $100 schnitt house voucher up for grabs. Mm. People seem to trust you. Yeah. That's what I'll say. Yeah. They always think you're telling the truth. Yeah, but sometimes I'm full of schnit, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> you're so full of schnit. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. Hazy is not here at the moment, and I will tell you why. So you might remember a few weeks ago we got this call from Scott from Seaford. Now, Scott has a theory about you and another high-profile person in Adelaide, and he joins us on the line because I want to let him tell you what his theory is. Good morning, Scotty. Yes, good morning. Go for it. Tell Hazy what you think. Well, I think that he is duping the South Australian public, and I think he is, in fact, the Premier, Peter Malinowskis, in disguise. We need to debunk this theory, so give us a couple of days, Scotty, and uh, we'll see if we can get the uh, PM in the same room as myself. So that was that, and then we needed to prove the theory to the people of Adelaide that Hazy and our Premier, Peter Malinowskis, were, in fact, two different people. So enter the big dog. Good morning. Good morning, Jody. Good morning, Hazy. We needed to get you in the same room at the same time to dispel the myth that you are one and the same person. I, I can honestly say that there's a far better looking rooster across the road from me here, and that's Hazy. Don't know about that. So while he was in the studio, the Premier revealed that he thought he could give Hazy's job a bit of a crack. Plus, he could probably do a better job, and I agree. What we might get you to do next week, come back in, jump over that side of the desk, and then you can be Premier for a day. Ooh. Are we happy with this arrangement? No. Possibly oh, wrong. I'm looking forward to um, going to a press conference and then getting asked these questions, and then that monkey with the tambourine starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Try to concentrate here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week, Premier. Sounds good. So what we have this morning is a good old-fashioned job swap. The top man is in the building, and coming up next... Premier Peter Malinowskis takes over the show as we bring to you Jody and Mally on No. Good morning, Adelaide. Welcome back to Jody and Mally on Nova. Oh, I love the sound of that. So um, the Premier has taken over this morning in a bid to prove that Hazy and Mally are different people. They've job swapped. And so um, Hazy will be running the state for today. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Premier? Oh, in- entirely relaxed about it. I yeah. Mean, what could possibly go wrong? I think uh, everything's going to be solved in the next sort of 24 hours. <laughs> Ramping crisis will be finished. Uh, I have no doubt that the NFL Super Bowl will be uh, making its way to, to Adelaide in, in short time. So I think the state's in good hands. Premier, are you happy to play a little game uh, we like to call Dead or Alive? Producer Zoe joins us now. Good morning. Can I reveal that you have a big crush on the Premier? Well, you have now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dead or Alive. Yeah. yeah. Jody and Hazy's Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive. It's a little game that I play. Usually coffee's on the line. Right. You're off the hook. I'll buy coffees today. But (laughs) but we're going to quiz you on a couple of celebrities. You just have to tell me if you think they're dead or alive. And it'll be a competition between you. Thanks. So, I'm going to start strong with... So, so, is it uh, me first or is it me versus... Switch it up. I'll throw it to you guys. First up. Daniel Michael DeVito Jr., also known as Danny DeVito. You're a camp driver? What do you mean, busting my chops here, make them believe you're a regular person? <laughs> no wait over there, I'll 
call your name and number, till then keep your mouth shut. American actor, comedian, filmmaker, he gained prominence for his portrayal of the taxi dispatcher Louis De Palma in the television series Taxi, which won him a Golden Globe Award and an Emmy Award. He was born in November 1944. Mally, dead or alive? Alive. Decisive. <laughs> Jody, dead or alive? I have no recollection of him dying, so I'm mm. going to say alive. Ding, ding, well done, you're both correct. Right. Off to All a right. strong start. Right. Excellent. This is good. This is good. All, right. All right, next up, Aretha Franklin. What you want, baby, I got. An American singer, songwriter and pianist referred to as the Queen of Soul. She has twice been placed ninth in Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Artists of All Time. With global sales of over 75 million records, Franklin is one of the world's best-selling music artists, born March 1942, dead or alive. Jodie, you start us off this time. She died. She's dead. Oh. But great news for the score, bad news for Aretha. Uh, next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. This will be a real test. Okay. okay. All right. John Wayne Olsen, former Australian politician, diplomat and football commissioner. He was Premier of South Australia between November 96 and October 2001. His other titles have included President of the Federal Liberal Party, Chairman of the Australian American Association, Chairman of the Adelaide Football Club and Deputy Chairman of the Adelaide Oval State and Management Authority, he was born in June 1945. Mally, dead or alive? Very much alive. Jody. Well, you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I'm going to say he... Maybe I'll go out on a limb, mm. because if I go out on a limb, I might win this thing. You might. I'm going to say he died. Congrats, Mally. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, well and truly alive, old John. I felt confident about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Danny yeah. DeVito, not so much. I know. I, just, uh, yeah. I wanted to roll the dice because yeah. I could have won it. Uh, well, the good news is you're buying coffee, not me. Okay. Uh, and thank you, Mally, for joining us. The Dead or Alive, Mally edition. Well done. Premier, thank you so much for coming in. My absolute pleasure. Good to be back here in Jody and Mally on Breakfast Radio. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest breaking story this town has ever seen. This is huge. Juice. We'll just pause so Gemma can wipe the drool from the side of her mouth. Settle down, Gemma. Thanks, Gemma. We'll pay you later. <laughs> um, what about yesterday? All hail King James. LeBron James, the NBA world, has been left in awe of his incredible feat after he made uh, the, the... What am I trying to say here? He broke the previous what was thought to be unbreakable record. Yes. No one thought that uh, this, this record would get touched by no. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, 39 years it was held. He needed 36 points in the game yesterday to reach the, get this, 38,387 point mark. That is absolutely incredible. And here is the moment. Coming to the end of the third quarter, LeBron James has shot in history. And LeBron stands alone. I think the most remarkable thing about it all is that, one, he's 38 years old. You shouldn't be doing what he's doing right now consistently mm. on the court. But also, it was about 150 games fewer than Kareem did for his record. That's so that's why they thought no one would get there because Kareem played over 1,500 games. LeBron's, he could have three or four years left. That's not the unbelievable part of this story. What's unbelievable, and he, here's a nice little insight into our off-air dynamic. I rang you yesterday because I was very tired and very emotional and I had just been sent out to Virginia for a drug bust and very late in the day. And so I call you and I'm in tears and I'm like, I'm, like, I'm so exhausted, I'm just so tired and I'm trying to juggle everything, blah, blah, blah. And I complained for a solid 10 minutes, mate, didn't I? And then you were so patient but eventually you've gone, um, look, this is unrelated but just so you know, LeBron is six points away <laughs> yeah, from on. breaking an unbreakable record. <laughs> just so you're up to date with the NBA. <laughs> I thought, look, I'll just write this phone call out but then... LeBron, three, bang, another one, <laughs> bang. We go, oh, no, he's getting close. Hey, Joe, just a heads up. Yeah. Uh, we're six points away from one of the biggest um, sporting moments probably this year or in, in our lifetime that we're going to see NBA-wise. So just a heads up. I'm juggling two things at the minute, <laughs> You're right? juggling two things. <laughs> I'm juggling two jobs and four kids. And you're like, oh, I just want to watch the basketball. Okay, let's go to the Olympics. <laughs> Channel 7 is now the home of the Olympic Games after Nine Entertainment pulled off, a, is no longer the home, is what I should say, pulled off a $305 million coup to nab the next five events, including the 2032 Brisbane Games. They've got Paris, Milan and LA and one TBC Games. Uh, Nine made the official announcement after the stock mask market closed on Wednesday after the network struck the deal with the IOC. They've already 
released the promo. Have a listen. The greatest events on the planet are coming to the proud new home of the Olympic Games. Nine and nine now. No, no. So, so they, Abby in the newsroom, they've kind of underplayed it, haven't they? With that Hazy, running? would it be safe to say that seven where you work is maybe not the home of sport anymore? Oh. <laughs> Melbourne Cup gone. No. Now the Olympics have gone to Tommy Ran at nine. Oh. I mean, he'll be leading the charge there, clearly, yeah, your I boyfriend. I can't believe single-handedly Tom Wren... <laughs> <laughs> Got Channel 9, the Olympics, who would have thought? Uh, it's a war of words right there. Good stuff from you, Abby. Shot, shots fired from the newsroom. Look, what I would say is, um, can you imagine watching the Olympics without Bruce McAvaney? That's Ooh. all I'll say. Ooh. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's like having a Vegemite on toast without butter. Yeah. It's like, is there something missing? Something's not quite right, is it? But um, congratulations to Channel 9. <laughs> you didn't mean a s- <laughs> second of that. <laughs> Tom Rennie, Tom Rennie. Little Rennie just throws around pumping his fist. Oh, we're little, on here, we're on. Little Rennie. He's off to the Olympics, all five of them. Um, let's talk about Shane Warne's will. So the contents of it have been revealed in court. So he had $21 million amassed in his fortune. It's been left primarily to his kids, not surprisingly. 31% to Brooke, Jackson and Summer. Um, Jackson also got a Mercedes and a BMW and a motorbike worth $375,000 and we presume I don't know if they'll sell his $6.5 million home in Portsea. What do you do with that? He did see he he accumulated unbelievable wealth at morning. Yeah. yeah. And this was a a self-described Bogan. Bogan from Victoria. I know. Who, he, could, spin a, who could spin a cricket ball. Yeah. He was an absolute phenomenon. I wonder who gets his baggy green. It's an interesting one. That would be worth a fortune now, wouldn't it? Has that been sold? Has it? Hasn't he already sold that? I don't know. Well, why are we looking at Sean like he might not answer that? What does he know about sport? <laughs> why are we looking at our EP? He knows yeah. nothing. Um, let's talk married at first sight in a lovely segue to a horny mum. Uh, she has sent her husband over the edge last night with her insatiable thirst for sex. It led to an expletive-laden tirade from him about her using him as a, well, human toy, let's say. Have a listen. You know what? I'm absolutely out of my mind angry. I am a man, and I am not a disposable sex toy. I didn't come here to meet someone to just them all the time. If I wanted to do that... There's dating apps for that. I came here to meet someone. She did not come here to meet someone. She came here to just all the time. Tell you what, if I had a dollar every time that I heard blokes complaining about a situation like this, (laughs) I'd have a dollar. (laughs) Here's a bloke who got around on the first night in Toy Story (laughs) pyjamas. So... I am not an object. I'm not an object. All right? <laughs> Let's see what's in here that counts. <laughs> Points to his heart. Yes, exactly a little, right. little role reversal. Oh, cool. How does it feel, boys? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Worst Job Wednesday. Jody and Hazy's Worst Job Wednesday. Guys, look, there's no job that I won't at least attempt. Very happy to get the hands dirty, and yesterday was a, an absolute little doozy. You were assigned the task of cleaning out Spike the Turtle's tank and to find out how you go. Michelle joins us on the line. How did it go, Michelle? Who, Spike or Hazy? Oh. <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> They're both pretty slow, but Hazy on this oh, occasion. No. Um, Hazy is just amazing for what he's done. He done it so well, and he was just so... Oh, what's the wording? He was just so keen and interested in spite and caring. It was, yeah, it was lovely. He was just very, very lovely. And anyone out there, put your hand up and get Hazy to come out and give you a hand because, yes. um, great job. This is the endorsement we're looking for. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, how would you like the payment? Would you take cash? Yeah. Or would you like to put it on? <laughs> Well, I'm thinking of having you come out every couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> you did such a good job. Hey, happy to if it means I get to spend more time with Spike. What a little champion he is. 28 years old. He looks so young and fresh. He is. And now you believe me, don't you? That rock is gleaming well heavy. Oh, I saw him afterwards and he goes, I had to lift this rock out of the tank and it was so heavy. Yeah, Michelle, they put a steel rod where my spine used to be. <laughs> but it was worth it to yeah, meet Spike believe- and yourself. <laughs> It sounds like no. you and Spike bonded. Yeah, I didn't know that you could, like humans, could bond so much with turtles, but here we are. And Michelle, you've obviously been doing <laughs> that for 28 years as well. Yes, yes, I have been, yes. 
Okay, so Michelle, you're endorsing uh, Hazy's services? Oh, definitely, yeah. Come on, Adelaide, put your hand up. Don't be embarrassed. I mean, if you've got something that you're struggling with or you're not too keen about doing, just ask Hazy, mm. and I'm sure he'll do it professionally and fantastic for you. Oh, can we get this on, like, a, a Google review a Google or something? Review. <laughs> Five stars for you. I'll be your media person. I need a job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, good on you, Michelle. And thank you so much for accommodating um, Hazy in your home yesterday. No, thank you guys for putting this out there to help people. It was wonderful. The video is up at Nova 919, so check it out. And in the comments section as well, tell me where to go. Worst job Wednesday. No job is too dirty or too big. Maybe it's too big, but I'll give it a crack. Ever felt like a holiday after your holiday? Like after every single holiday for me. (laughs) Plan your next getaway on the What If app and access mobile exclusive deals. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable just in case you change your plans. Booking cancellation windows apply. What if it's Aussie for travel? Are you telling me you built a time machine? Thursday, 9th of February. We'll take a little trip down memory lane for On This Daisy. 1958, the great Jane Doyle was born in Adelaide, South Australia. Today is her 65th birthday. Happy birthday, lovely Jane Doyle. Yes, happy birthday to the Queen. Tonight, a burst water main south of the city throws peak hour chaos in traffic. Oh, what about when she retired and I gave her a bottle of wine and you were like, why did you do that? She's married to a winemaker. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, this is a good drop, but I get better drops than I have. <laughs> 1964, first appearance of the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show, live from New York, broadcast to 73.7 million television viewers. It would seem that the Beatles were a hit. No, oh, you think? <laughs> Solid stuff. 1969, the jumbo jet, the Boeing 747, at the time the largest commercial plane, made its first flight. First giant 747 is presented to the world. This is a milestone in Boeing history. And now, all those Qantas jumbo jets are somehow having mechanical issues of the same, <laughs> turning around mid-flight. What about just being on that first flight and just people, like, lighting up durries? Can yeah. you believe that was ever a thing that I you could know. smoke on a plane? In anywhere, let alone on a plane. Like, <laughs> outrageous stuff. And they're like, smoking's actually quite good for you. It really hardens up the lungs. Yeah. It doesn't, by the way. No. No. Uh, 97, The Simpsons became the longest-running animated cartoon TV series when its 166th episode went to air in America. I don't know why I'm programmed like this, but I grew up on The Simpsons, so every time I see any sort of situation in life, I somehow try and compare it to a Simpsons moment. You really do, don't you? Yes. Who's your favourite character? It's hard to go past Homer, isn't it? Well, you can. Go right on past Homer and go to Ralph. Ralph. Who's a rock star. I was going to say, if you went down the path of, say, I don't know, someone boring like Sideshow Mel. <laughs> Remember Sideshow Mel? What a little buzzkill he was. Get that bone out of your hair, mate. Me not speak English? That's impossible. That's impossible. <laughs> Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday album reaches number one on the Billboard 200 in its 11th week on the chart. Nicki Minaj. Uh, she's built just a little bit different. Yeah. Quiet taste. I like her. Okay. Mm. All right. Bit of a potty mouth, if you ask me. Yes, she's very loose with the tongue. 2020 the 92nd Academy Awards Parasite, which was a... Um, movie about me when I was 20, no, just kidding, first non-English <laughs> film to win Best Picture. And the Oscar goes to Parasite. Ah, hmm. there you go. I can't say I, I do the whole subtitles thing. Nah. Yeah. It's confusing to it's me. It's too intelligent for me. Yeah. And the number one song in Australia in 2007, oh, <laughs> feast you is around this. Do you remember these guys? Hinder, Lips of an Angel. Oh. What did they My go- girl's <laughs> in the next room. <laughs> They didn't follow it up with too much good stuff. Today. Essentially is a song about cheating on your partner. Mm. But it's still a good song, am I right? This is a banger. Let's all sing it together about infidelity. <laughs> good morning. Honey, why are you calling me so late? <laughs> oh. oh, a bit of hinder to celebrate uh, on this Daisy from back in the day. And uh, Sean, producer Sean, who would have thought somehow you have no idea what that song is, mate? Come, but some grow believable. up. Grow up, Sean. Well, if you ask, do uh, like a Daisy on this Hazy about... No, like, can you say it right? Why do you get <laughs> dyslexia when you try to say the name of that segment? Hazy on this Daisy. Thank you. I should write. I write it every bloody day. I should know what it is. No, but if you ask me like when the Venga Boys were like number one back in 1999, I can tell you when that was. No or when Aqua was in vibes. 1997. Oh, same vibes. Okay, yeah, real same vibes. Everyone's rocking out in the car to a bit of Barbie Girl. No one is. No one. No Maybe one's going... Very different. Doesn't know Hinder. You've got to be schnitting me.
Producer Sean, let's just move on nice and swiftly. You've got to be schnitting me. Two stories. One's the truth. One is a lie. Hundred dollar voucher for Schnitt House up to, up for grabs. If you can tell us who's telling the lie. Mm. Thirteen twenty four ten. Who's got a reputation here for telling a lie? He's a little dishonest. Well, it's easy to trust you, Joe's, but uh, sometimes uh, some of those stories that you've told from back in the day just don't quite add up. Oh, don't they? Okay. Mm. Well, why don't you go first then? Okay. Mm. Do you want me to go first? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, my youth had uh, quite a, an interesting youth, grew up on the farm. Yeah. And on the farm as well, we had sheep, we had cattle, uh, we actually also had horses. Mm. So for the first, first part of my youth, from around the age of six to probably around 13 or 14, I was heavily into equestrian. Show jumping, <laughs> to be particular. Well, why are you laughing? What? What are you laughing at, Sean? Is, is, is Come here and laugh in my face. <laughs> no, no, that's not okay. how he used to do it. Okay, you're taller than... Because you weren't trotting around, mate. We're going over show jumps, all right? So you're getting a brisk canter and a gallop up as well. As someone who is around show jumpers, like in my royal show capacity, you are not the type that gets up at four o'clock in the morning, braids the horse's hair, <laughs> and then trollops around. Uh, can I just say as well, there is no need and it is never necessary to be braiding the horse's hair. That's your choice. That's your personal time spent with horses, but that's not needed for but what we were doing back then. On that. Okay, no. not in show jumping. Yeah, okay. it's a time trial. Nothing. You're talking. You're talking probably dressage. Yeah, all of the above. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, none of that rings true. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I tell you what is true: the fact that I can proudly claim that I've never had a cigarette in my life, never had a puff. <laughs> Never Did, wanted to. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay. No, uh, oh, I okay. guess. The I traditional guess, cigarette we're yeah, talking. I guess four or five times uh, each shift, uh, Jody's uh, popping out to go to the loo. <laughs> That's what's happening, is it? <laughs> I've never had a cigarette, and I'll tell you why because I grew up in a household in Hobart, Tasmania, where everyone smoked. My stepdad, my mum, my sister, they all smoked. Oh. And so, well, that's not bad. I thought you were going to say I grew up in a household where every single person was in the same relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's a tazzy joke. It's a tazzy joke. Anyway, smoking's so bad. <laughs> I, I remember every year um, Bathurst would roll around, and my stepdad Jeff. Yeah, we'd go. Come on, Holden. Come on. <laughs> These best holding gear. <laughs> yeah, they'd all dress up in their gear. They'd sit in our lounge room, him and Snorkel and his other mate, Baz. <laughs> Snorkel. <laughs> what a character he was. And there was just such a thin film of smoke that filled the whole house for two yep. days straight where they sat there and had 700 cascades. Yeah. Oh, good times in my youth, eh? <laughs> really good times. That's why you've got this always this sort of half-consistent cough about you as well. <laughs> All right, two stories, one truth, one lie. Mm. Um, is my story believable that I had a, a solid little period of my youth, right, seven to around about the age of 13 or 14, we're heavily into show jumping. We had horses on the farm. Mm. Or Jody's story, and bear in mind as well. Yeah. She is from Tassie. What's that got to do with it? <laughs> the smoking story. Yeah, okay. Is that believable? Let's right. go to the phones. We've got Ali from McGill. Good morning, Ali. Good morning, guys. How are you going? Great, thank you. And you? Good, thank you. This is a tricky one. Yeah. I really want to believe you, Joe, but I, uh, I don't know. Hey, he's lying. Oh, hang on. So am I, I'm lying, am I? Yep. How very dare you. <laughs> you know what I will say, though, um, Ali? Yeah. Yes. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations. Well done. Hey, what gave it away? There's no way you're a horse guy. There's no. no way you're a horse guy. Come yeah, on. Yeah. No, there was an opportunity for horses early on, but it was horses v motorbikes. And yeah. guess what got the kick? <laughs> guess, guess what path the bogan took? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Says the lady from Jazzy. <laughs> uh, congratulations to Ali from McGill. Well done, Ali. Uh, we're not schnitting you. Schnitt House Australia serves the best schnitzels made fresh daily with authentic golden classic and celiac friendly breadcrumbs, Hilton Golden Grove and O'Halloran Hill. So there you go. Go. Who would have thought that you were telling the truth for once in your life? Mm. Big morning coming up. The Premier is still to come. He's going to take over your job. You're going to swap. You're going to go and run the state this mm. morning. Uh, Harry Styles tickets and also pink tickets still to come. Sweet. So when Mally's in here, I can go off and have a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Jody and Hazy back in just 60 seconds. I'm rocking the suburbs. Jody and Hazy's 
Brecky in the Burbs. Brecky in the Burbs returns tomorrow, Joe. We had such a good time last week uh, at the Front Page Cafe there. We're going to do it again. So you can catch us live at Cafe de Villiers at Elizabeth tomorrow from 7 till 9. Heaps of special guests, including John Aiken from Maths. Mm. He'll be live on site with us. It's our Jodie and Hazy Brecky in the Burbs together with Adelaide's Channel 9. Come down, say good day. And jump onto the Nova Player or Nova FM and let us know if you would like us to come to your place of business. Mm, all right, so it was pink tickets before. Maybe it's Harry Styles' turn. Hey, hey this is Harry Styles. This is Harry Styles. Oh, surprised you. Oh, yes, each and every morning for the next few days at least, uh, 20 past eight, we announce a winner, some lucky person, flights, accommodation, heading over to Melbourne. But that's the first part because we announced a winner and then they've got 10 minutes to get back to us. Yes. And if they don't, you could just swoop in and pick up some free tickets on a Thursday morning. Wouldn't that just set you up for a great day? Just grabbing my envelope here. Okay. Rip it open. Good there. You know, do you need a hand there? I'm going to. Yes, please. It can be. Uh, it's, Shoot. Uh, I put your leg there. Okay. You, you're, res- it, you're wrestling the envelope like a crocodile. I know. I feel so. like there could be a crocodile in there. <laughs> Usual. It's not a crocodile. Mm. Is a name, and that name is Adam Bell from Flagstaff Hill. Adam Bell from Flagstaff Hill, you have 10 minutes to call us back. Okay. He's been on the standby list every single day, and he's dreaming of seeing right. Harry. He um, camped on Port Road for tickets in 2013. Camped on Port Road, I tell you. Camped on Port Road, that can be dangerous. Mm, can be, a lot of traffic. Which part of Port Road? Mm. <laughs> this is a good part, this is a bad part. <laughs> <laughs> He has nine minutes and 36 seconds to get back to us. That is Adam Bell from Flagstaff Hill. If you know him, get on to him and get him to give us a call 13 24 10. All right, there you go. Harry Styles tickets up for grabs inside 10 minutes. Come on, Adam. 13 24 10. If you're not Adam, no doubt you're sitting there going, please don't call Adam. <laughs> Straight <laughs> yeah. into Hazy. Big show tomorrow. Hazy is just about to hold his press conference as the Premier of the State, and we're going to find out how that goes. Make sure you join us for Brecky in the Burbs. John Aiken from Maths is going to be down there at Cafe de Billy's at Elizabeth. Uh, Judge Jody is back, and Fitzy is going to join us on the show as well. EP Sean, can you jump on the mic, please? Hello. You're a tunnel enthusiast. You're a pumpkin judge. You were the former founder of the U5 Spice Girls fan group. Can you tell everyone yes, yes, what you're doing? Yes. Oh, sorry. My <laughs> apologies. It all makes a difference when you're in primary school. <laughs> that, that's the thing that you pick up out of those mm-hmm. three mm-hmm. little pastimes yeah. that you have. Tell everyone what you're doing on the weekend, please, before we go. Oh, well, I haven't actually uh, told my partner what we're doing. I'm going to Melbourne. I'm very excited. It's the anniversary weekend. And I've decided, after listening to Fitzy and Whipper, hmm. there's a Titanic restaurant. You're going to a Titanic restaurant. What does yes. that involve, please? Uh, well, it means we're dressing up, which, once again, haven't told the partner, in, like, 1920s attire or 19, 1910s attire. Look, I would hate um, you. Everything, <laughs> everything is on a slant as if, like, the Titanic is going down. <laughs> so you've actually got to, like, sit, like, the table's all on a slant. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Is the Titanic going down like your relationship after this dinner date? Probably will be, <laughs> but that's why you go to Melbourne. Why not have a bit of fun? Okay, we've got a massive show tomorrow, don't we? We do, we yeah. do. And we've also got a couple of extra finalists who've just made the Harry's Hotline list as oh, well. Oh, yes, so. that's so true. Kelly from Yankalilla, Brenda from Flagstaff Hill, Gail from Goldview, Darren from Lower Mitcham and Harriet from Enfield are all on the standby list. Big show. All right, huge show, huge weekend for you. We'll see you all tomorrow.